Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today let's take a closer look at these Knipex 1396-200s. These are what Knipex calls uh, pliers for electrical installation. Um, there's another pair here, very similar. I'll go over the differences. But this actually has a couple of unique features, which is kind of neat. Um, in comparison, uh, these are 1372-8s, is what these, I guess, are called. Um, they are both German-made Knipex pliers, um, similar in function um, in terms of having a wire cutter uh, down here. They've got, uh, this one's got two stripping options here. Uh, this has a much greater amount of stripping options, and then they move up into kind of the pipe grabbing or round grabbing uh, teeth, and then the longitudinal teeth. The tips are a little bit different. Um, this one's obviously, you know, it looks like less than half the thickness of the other. So definitely much more of a needle nose, whereas this is similar to more of a duck bill. Um, this one does have screw cutting capabilities. This one does not. This is black with the kind of an oxide or phosphate coating on it, um, which is a little bit less resistant to corrosion. Um, this one's got the chrome finish, which is more resistant to corrosion. However, I believe it's easier or better to, I guess, easier to get a more of a razor sharp um, cutting surface when you don't have to deal with the chrome, like on this one. So this technically might be a little bit sharper. Um, they both seem tremendously sharp to me. But let's take a look at a couple of other features. Um, this one has a lockout. They're both spring-loaded. I'll show you that. Uh, the springs are a little different. This one goes to its maximum and stops. It can't go anymore. This one, the spring pops it out to here, but you can extend this further. So it goes to that size and stops. If you look at then the spread, you can see that in fact this one's quite a bit more. It goes out to its max. They both have a uh, way to limit or lock the blade. Now this is a limit, this is a lock. This doesn't provide you much useful operation when, when in fact that, um, that lock is engaged. And they actually show both of them as having kind of a little padlock there. Um, but here's what's interesting. This one, you might notice, doesn't close completely. That's because almost all of the features, or essentially all of them, are still accessible with this uh, limiter engaged, except the sharp cutting teeth. So that's like a protection mechanism. So you can easily get in um, and you know strip wire just like that. You can't cut the wire um, because it doesn't fit into the opening. Um, unless you open it up. Now, I don't know if you caught that. That's another, I don't know if that's a feature. I don't think it is. I think it just happens. This is interesting and it's a little bit easier to see on Romex. You see, they're wide open now. This is kind of a, a an interesting phenomenon. So here's with the pliers. I'm gonna grab a piece of the Romex here and they're limited. So this little thing, there's enough momentum in the snap to engage the limiter. So when I cut right here, watch that limiter. And engaged, do it better with the camera here. Try this, see that? It pops in and then that locks the uh, mechanism right away. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. It's kind of interesting and I can do it a little bit on some of the smaller wire sometimes. Let's get my hand out of the way here. See that? Um, if it is designed that way, that's not only clever, but you know, a, a reasonable piece of momentum inertia, I guess, in engineering. Um, but you can see, let me get that to focus. This camera's cold. Um, just it's just that little tiny motion there. And that's enough to limit it. Uh, they call this a six function plier. So I guess you've got the grabbing tips at the front. You've got the longitudinal grabbing teeth right here. The pipe or round teeth there. A pair of strippers right here. Uh, and then the uh, larger, um, which is also kind of neat. The, the way it ovalizes keeps, if you're cutting um, stranded wire, um, if you watch, you can see how that splays out 
but it stays confined to make a nice cut. Whereas if you just go to something, I'll use these here, and it splays out, it can kind of get a little wonky. Not too bad though. But anyway, I really like them. They have the um, kind of the insulated thousand volt rated uh, handles. Now, uh, I did a review, or I, 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 uh, let's see, it might have been, might have been these, um, or a, kind of a intro video on them. Um, and I had a, uh, a commenter post that um, one of the main reasons for these kinds of handles is not because you might accidentally grab a live wire, but uh, you don't want to arc across something. So if I had two, you know, two areas um, that were live and dropped the pliers on them, that it could shoot across. I've done that with car batteries. Um, and I blown out a couple of things. Uh, took a baseboard heater out. I thought it was 110. It was actually 220. And I tested it with an appliance because I was going to rewire it. And it turned out that it was 220 and shorted out the appliance. But see, I've dropped things on car batteries. And uh, a few other times I've, I've kind of messed up with some wires. Once with a a um, multi-tester. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was the main reason, he said, for this particular design. That makes a lot more sense to me, um, you know, since that's a, a risk or, you know, if you drop it down into a, a workspace or fuse box or conduit or something, I don't know. But anyway, this is a, a really neat tool. You can also ream with it, I guess. Really sharp here, especially if you're doing plastic junction boxes um, and outlets and things like that. Um, it is very sharp on the edge right up here. That's, I guess, good for, for the reaming. Some things don't ream very well. I did a kind of a test with some of the rounded edges on linemans. Somebody also said these aren't linemans or the little teeny weeny ones aren't linemans. I know they're not linemans, but if you had to describe how they line up in the, in the plier world, not according to size, but according to blade shape, you know, these combination pliers, they... That's why I call them mini linemen. I mean, that's what they look like to me. But anyway, um, as far as the uh, the operation use, um, really nice. These are moving into my number one spot. Um, I have looked at others um, for stripping, cutting, nibbling on wire. This is a, um, one of Klein's hybrids. They make several different hybrids. This actually has the much larger lineman-esque uh, blade at the top, stripping, cutting, bolts, or, or um, screw cutting here, crimping. Um, but these are pretty sweet, uh, and I do like the idea that um, you can operate them quite easily with the limiter engaged, because uh, if you've got sharp edges, and these are, you know, when I feel them, these, are, these do even feel sharper now that I look at them, but when you're cutting, um, that's interesting. Doesn't open as as far. You have to line the wire up or spread them. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one takes a little less re less force to to cut the wire, um, but it'll corrode, I guess, over time. If you live in a place, maybe the south, where it corrodes easier. But anyway, there they are. Uh, I like them. I like them a lot. I like the chrome finish. I like this this limiter. Um, the smaller uh, tip on them um, just provides a little bit better work environment in smaller spaces maybe than something a little bit larger. Um, I'll keep using them, keep playing around with them, but they definitely uh, are at the top of the game. I mean, if you're looking for um, kind of a hybrid plier, sort of a one-size-fits-all, but in a form factor that actually works with quality behind it. Um, definitely take a look at these guys. Um, they do come in an assortment of different handles. I've been playing around with that, trying to figure out, I think it depends on what the plier's for um, and how you intend on using it, whether or not you want um, the extra guards up here, the thousand volt rating. A lot of people really like the standard dip because it doesn't uh, take up too much space. Um, that's what people were saying about this. If this had the standard dip on it, it would be way smaller. That's true, it would be smaller. 
Um, I don't think it would be any lighter really, or very just minor uh, savings in weight, but it might be a little bit more difficult to use. You know, if you shrunk out, shrunk down the, um, the handles to something like that. However, I could show that, but anyway, I don't know. That's why we do this. Anyway, so there they are. I uh, highly recommend them, really like them. And with that, Doc out.